All right, so by request, we're going to try to tackle a, one like chapter 11, number 20. And this one is more of what you've been doing, except for it asks you to understand the design elements. So that is, it asks you to understand how you would apply math differently for an independent or related sample t-test as a function of the design. So it gives you this idea based on a study that was done by Stevens and colleagues looking at whether or not cursing helped for pain control. It turns out cursing has some interesting benefits, including um, people tend to be able to exert more strength and decrease their levels of pain perceived, etc., by cursing. So apparently swearing in sports has a place. Uh, and so it, they give you the idea that people have either, say, a neutral word, like, you know, schnikes or fudge, or people say the actual curse word or swear word. And so people are saying one of these two types of words, and you're looking to see what their ratings of pain are. Uh, so I have made up some numbers. So this is modeled after the problem, but notice these numbers are made up. So this is not the actual problem. Don't take these answers and try to plug them in as correct. They're not going to be correct. So the thing to understand is you have two different types of tests. Now, a related sample t-test would be if you had the same people. So say that these are people and this is Joe and Jane and Sue and Bob and Phil and so on. And the, this is Joe and he, he, we have him go through the thing twice. One time he says the neutral word and one time he says the curse word, but Joe is going through both conditions that would make it related. Now, the other way that we would do this is if we had groups and so you have group one and group two that are doing different things. So group one is saying neutral words and it has a set of people. And then the other group is different people. And so you are comparing the two groups against one another because you don't have the same people saying neutral and swear words. You have a group of people who said neutral words and a group of people who said swear words. So that requires different processes. Okay, so those are the different designs for related versus independent. Now, if we did a related sample t-test, the first thing we always want to do is get the difference scores because a related sample t-test is, is basically a special case of a one sample t-test. And the first thing we need to do is get the difference. So here I'm going to subtract these two scores, right? So I'm taking A2, subtracting B2, I'm getting the difference. What's the change in the conditions? Uh, I'm going to do that for all of my observations. So there are my different scores. Now, to do a related sample t-test, once I have these different scores, I never use these values again. I'm going to only use these values. So the way I would do that is I'm going to get the t-test, if you remember, is going to be the mean of the different scores divided by the standard error of the different scores. And the standard error of the different scores equals the standard deviation of the different scores divided by the number of the different scores, right? Okay, now this would be like the notation for these things, you know, people write a little different, all types of kinds of ways and whatnot, but it's like, if you see something like S sub M, you know, like, this is like the standard deviation of means, so that's a standard error. Um, some people abbreviate it like that. Remember in your book, you learned SEM, standard error of the mean. Part of it is just remembering what the notation means. Anytime you get a subscript, so like if I do something like S sub D, that sub D is telling me that that standard deviation characterizes D score, difference scores, right? So you got to pay attention to the notation. If I had S and then I had sub D and then I had bar, so that's a standard error of mean differences because D bar is an average difference. Your book writes it sometimes M sub D, the mean of the differences. Um, but if I have a standard deviation that describes a statistic that is the mean difference, remember the standard deviation for a sampling distribution of a statistic is the standard error. So a standard deviation for a statistic is a standard error. A standard error is calculated 
by the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Now I forgot to put your little square root comment here. So let me fix that. So this is the standard error. So if we were going to go in and calculate this, we're going to get the average of our different scores. We're going to divide them by the standard deviation of the different scores divided by the square root of the number, I'm going to use count function, of the different scores. And that would be our t-test. Now, if you wanted to check yourself, you can always use the calculator that I built for you guys that does different, um, like the t-test help calculator. And you can use this and just get the descriptive statistics that you need to plug in. So, for example, here you're given a data set, not summary statistics. So to do these, you'd have to go in and get these values. So what do I need? I need sum of squares, which is deviation square, if you remember from earlier lessons. There's my sum of squares. My count is my sample size. Um... It tells me the tails and the difference. I need the mean of the differences, so I need the average difference score. So I'm going to get the average of these things, and that is the mean difference. Right? And so I would plug these in to my calculator, 202.5 with 10 in my sample. I have a two-tailed test at 0.05 alpha with a mean difference of 0.5. And there's my T obtained, 0.33. And this also gets me the p-value. Right, the p value you could get if you did um, t dot dis dot two tail, and then t value and our degrees of freedom is n minus one, which is nine, and there is our p value, which my calculator also here is computing for you. So you can just get the descriptives and plug them into the calculator, or you can you know do the math by hand or do the math using Excel formulas or type it into a calculator. But that is the process if this is a related sample test. Now, if this is not a related sample test, rather it is an independent sample test, I have to treat the data differently. And I'm never going to get these different scores. The different scores are not going to be what I care about. Rather, I'm going to summarize the two samples separately because they're independent. So if I'm going to summarize the samples separately, I'm going to come over to my independent sample and I need to get all these values for them. So I can get the SS, the N, the mean for the samples, right? And so if I go in here and I get my deviation squared for sample one, the neutral sample, and I would also want to get that for sample two, so I'm going to drag it across. Notice this now does it for column B. And then I'm going to get the count for sample one and for my neutral sample. Those are going to be the same. And I'm going to get my mean for sample one, the neutral. And then I also want to get it for the square. And notice, this, this was where we got the mean difference. The difference between those is 0.5, right? So then I come over here, and I have to treat these all separately. So I'm going to put in my sum of squares, my sample size for the first group, sum of squares, my sample size for the second group. I'm going to put in my means for the two groups. I'm going to put in my tails. And then here is my T and my P value. So notice these values are a little different. We're going to come to the same conclusion here. Um, and what is this test doing? Well, the math of what this test is doing, if you remember the t-test, is going to be the difference between the two means, so mean 1 minus mean 2, divided by, and we're going to do the square root of the pooled variance, so that's s squared sub p, pooled variance over n1, first sample size, plus the pooled variance over n2, and you're going to put all that together and square root it. And that's the standard error of the difference between means. And so that is what your equation would look like. So if we did it in an equation editor, you're going to have the way your book often writes it again is like capital M. And that's fine. Um, so you have the mean for the first group 
minus the mean for the second group. I often would use x bar, which is statistical notation for means. You're gonna have those mean differences in the numerator. And then in the denominator, you're gonna have a square root and you're going to have two fractional terms and they're gonna be pooled variances. So you're gonna have the variance of the sample, but it's for pooled variance, right? Remember we have to use both and do the weighted. And then we have the sample size for each group. And that's what your equation looks like. So we would plug all our numbers into this equation, which would be six minus 5.5 .5 in the numerator. And then the pooled variance we're gonna get by using the sum of squares and the DF term. So remember the pooled variance to calculate that is um, the SS terms added together divided by the DF terms added together. In this case, that would be 106 plus 88.5 divided by nine plus nine, which is 10.81 rounded to the second decimal place. And that's what we got right here in the pooled variance in our calculator, right? So we'd have this pooled variance that would go in for the pooled variance here in each of these two locations. And then this would be N1 was 10 and N2 was also 10. And we'd put all those numbers in to solve. And so those are the two answers we would get uh, if we were to perform this test as a related or as an independent sample test. So you notice that our T obtains and P values are slightly different, um, but we come to a very similar conclusion. You notice that one thing that is gonna be different is the degrees of freedom for the final test. So for the related test, you have N minus one degrees of freedom and you only had 10 different scores. So you have nine degrees of freedom but you had 20 independent scores because you had different people, right? So you had 10 neutral group and 10 swear group. So you have 20 independent scores. Each sample has N minus one degrees of freedom, right? Each sample has N minus one degrees of freedom. So DF1 is nine, DF2 is nine. So you have 18 degrees of freedom or N minus two. So the degrees of freedom change, right? Uh, but here the conclusions stay the same. But that is how we would apply the process of related versus independent sample test here differently.